I'm really excited about being upside down. <laughs> First, let's get your parachute on. We gotta fly with a parachute because we're doing aerobatics. Even though uh, I see no more potential for us to bail out of this today than we would the 140 you're flying. <laughs> so use your elbow. Uh, and first, that's a lot easier. Yep, and then sticking your arm through. There you go. Okay. Be careful with that. So that's your D-ring. You ever done any parachuting? I have not. Okay. So this is your D-ring, it's gonna pull your chute. If you had to bail out of the airplane, and we're gonna open the canopy, and then you're gonna roll out as best you can. Um, and I'll be very clear, I'll say, John, we're gonna have to get out. And I'll say, John, get out. After the third time, I'm going out and you're staying in, <laughs> so right? So get out. So yeah, so, and then once you get out, trying to stay clear of the tail, then grab that D-ring and pull it like your life depends on it. Because it does. It does. <laughs> yeah. So strapping in when you know you're going to do aerobatics is a lot different than your normal strap in and you know like a, a 172 or any other kind of GA airplane. Okay. First thing, you don't want anything loose in your pockets. No pocket knives, no change, nothing like that in your front pockets. Okay, so anytime we're take critical phase of flight, takeoff, landing, or acro, we want it on the fuselage tank. So there's a 40 gallon wing tank and a 10 gallon fuselage tank. So this doesn't hold a whole lot, but 20 minutes of an extra flight is about average. 30 minutes a long extra flight, quite honestly. Okay, you ready to go? I believe I am, sir. Okay. When you're going for you know, private, you end up doing unusual attitudes and recoveries there. Uh, but that was back in 1998. So it's been quite a while since I've physically flown anything like that. And quite a while since I've paid attention to anything like that, too. Uh, I think the main focus, though, is the importance of being proficient with upset recovery. So I, I think that's definitely going to be the focus. Uh, that's the type of flying that I think we're going to do the most of, or at least what we should be looking to get the most from, even if it's going to venture into aerobatics territory. All right, John, stay with me on the flight controls. I don't see much of a crosswind, a little bit of a quartering tail, so we'll get a little bit of right uh, going here. And notice I'm going to just gradually get this power going. I don't want too much too soon. And then... There's the tail wheels ready, just barely lift it. 27 seconds around that truck. About 60, we'll go ahead and rotate it. Right about 1,000 feet on the takeoff roll. And as soon as we get to a safe altitude, I'll go to uh, wing tanks. And uh, John, I'm going to give it to you, your airplane. All right, got controls. Make us a right-hand turn uh, to the ridge line. Climb us at 110 knots, up to 5,000. Uh, whatever bank you feel comfortable. Don't use your instruments. Just look outside. Give me a level 180-degree turn to south. I'll do that to the left. All righty. It looks clear. The man was built for aerobatics. It goes right into 60 to 75. I love steep turns, sir. <laughs> Look at that. You're nailing it, too, buddy, right on it. But you ready to go right into some stalls? Sure am. Okay, let's pull the power back and just pull the nose up and uh, see what it stalls straight ahead, right? Just keep it coordinated. You, you can see your uh, little dash there on your 275? Right under the arrows, yeah. yep. Yeah, so just give me a little left rudder. Keep it coordinated. And this is a power off stall. I just want you to feel the buffet and then the stall. Just keep it coming. Keep it coming. Keep that it coming seems... back. Keep it coming back. Working on it. There you go. Okay. There's a the stall. Nice. See how you can bunt and recover like that? Yeah. Hey, I'm going to take away your cheat, your stall warning. I want you to do it again, John, and uh -huh. go in and out of the... Uh, in and out of the stall. Stall it, release it, stall it, release it. Okay. Not using power, just using stick. Uh, hand is not on the throttle. Okay. Little left rudder to center it. So just stall it, release it. There you go. Now release. Get out of the stall. Now stall it again. Now release. There you go. Nice. 
now let's do a power on stall, John. Same thing. Let's go about, uh, let's go about, you know, 18 inches of manifold pressure or so. I'll let you have that power set. Okay. And uh, just pull it on up into a stall. I imagine that's going to take a lot more. Just make sure you're coordinated. There you there go. Unload. Yep, let's go back into a full unload. There you go. Get okay. it get it back flying airspeed again. Now pull it up, do the same thing. When you unload, get it back to the flying airspeed. Okay, unload. There you go. Nice. Get flying airspeed. Ah, you go you went back into that yeah, secondary saw. Did you sure feel did. that? Sure That's did. awesome. But I'm glad you felt that. I'm glad you got to feel that. Okay, let's see. Now what I'd like to do, John, is some turning stalls for you. So let's keep, let's bump the power back a little bit. Let me see what I'm doing here. Okay, there you go. And give me a right-hand turn, whatever you're comfortable, and just in the turn, pull it into the stall. Just keep nice, coordinated turn. Unload, very nice. That was beautiful. Did you see that, John? We had a lot of bank, pretty good amount of pitch, and you just unload and it comes out of the stall. That's probably one of the most important things to learn about aerobatics and really flying in general. When you unload the airplane, you're not asking anything of the wing, so you can't stall it. It won't stall when you're unloaded. As okay. the airplane doesn't know which way is up. So let's go Let's go with a left-hand turn this time. Looks clear. Same thing. All righty, here we go. <laughs> All right. All right, you normally fly this thing uh, base and final at about 90. So here we are, John, we're on the base to final turn, and oh, you know, we're overshooting, so we pull back and we try to pull the nose around, and look, that's what happens. That's what happens in a base to final stall spin. And notice the recovery from that was just unload. Yep. Unload and the airplane will recover. Let's climb back up. And you I'm gonna know, have fine, you I want to let you, or maybe I can try that. Yep. Did you get that concept though? That's, oh, absolutely. That's how fast it happens in that base to final uh, turn stall. Is people are overshooting. They're flying their normal airspeed, so they think they're okay because they're flying. You know, in this case, 90 knots somewhere in there, um, and they overshoot a little bit, so they use a little bottom rudder as they're pulling. Use a little bottom rudder to pull that nose around, and that's how fast the airplane departs. And, of course, they increase their stall speed when they increase that weight by pulling on it a little bit. Yeah, yeah, exactly right, yeah. Okay, and then, of course, we all know when you're stall and you're uncoordinated, you're going to spin. Spin. All right, this time I'd like you to do the same thing, John. So I'm going to pull back. Uh, your power would be back around, you know, somewhere right around here. And as that plane departs, just go, just unload the airplane, and if that doesn't fix it, go opposite rudder, uh, then the roll, and uh, don't stall it as you come back, as you recover, don't get into a secondary stall. All right, gotcha. you ready? Yep. So fly me at 90 knots, use your, uh, you're flying around, you start your base turn, you're in a slight descent, okay, 90 knots, you're in a slight descent, because you're in base, 90 knots, you got the power. I do. Okay. 90 knots, and then all of a sudden, nope, oh, shoot, uh, you're overshoot, so you pull that nose around, little bottom rudder, and that's how fast it goes. Your recovery was a lot quick and cleaner. Yeah, well, I've done it a few times. <laughs> Let's say we were doing that same thing, okay, we're in a, we're in a turn, um, you know, but for whatever reason, we're pulling back, and we give it, we give it the old slip stall, right? What would happen then? Which way do you think it's going to roll? This way. Yep. Sure is. Woo. Now we power up. Nose down, power back. And as the nose comes to the horizon, you power up. So, you know, it's going to it's gonna roll in the direction that your rudder's going. Yep. All right. So the G available to an airplane is directly equivalent to how much uh, airspeed you have. So uh, the faster your airspeed, the more gentle you want to be with your stick movement, right? Okay. So I'm going to uh, rotate us in to, uh, and you want to do a nice straight pull. You try not to do loaded pulls. And we'll get up to, this will be about four Gs, okay? 
that's about four G's. That changed my face a little bit. Yeah, it did. You want to try it? Absolutely. All right. The thing about pulling G's is I'll do a loaded pull, right? Very light G's. You don't want to pull and roll at the same time when gotcha. you're doing G's. What you want to do in aerobatic kind of maneuvering is you, you unload, set your lift vector, center, and then pull. Got it. Makes sense? Yep, yep. It'll yep. get to where that three-step process is very second nature to you, but you want to avoid the rolling pull like I just did there. That tends to uh, twist your airframes, and it's, and it's a very inefficient turn. So I'm going to speed you up to about 140, 150. We'll unload. Airplanes acceler accelerate better when they're less than 1G. So we're going to unload. And now, John, I want you to come on the stick and blend into it. Don't jerk it, okay? Got it. Your airplane, your throttle, to the left. Left or right, either one, and just blend into the Gs until you're comfortable, okay? There you go. Nice pull. Steady pull. Steady. Steady pull, 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 pull. There's five Gs. And now unload and roll out. Very nice. Very nice. That was a 5G pull there. Sweet. How'd you do in terms of, did you start to lose any vision or feel dizzy nope. or anything? Okay, nice. Had to settle into my happy place to make sure I stayed focused. But, okay. But that was about it. Actually, I had to do some work mentally. All right. What I want to show you is how fast this airplane accelerates when the power is up and your nose gets down. All right. So, let's see. Uh, yeah. All right. So, what we're doing about 90, right? I'm going to push the power up and now push the nose down and watch how fast this thing accelerates. There's already 120. We got to pull the power back or we'll overspeed. And we're already at 160. So it's really, really important in this airplane when we start doing over the top maneuvers, power back, that power once back. that nose comes through the horizon and starts down, get your power back. And then you can manage it from there. But as a default response, nose down, power down in this airplane. Okay? Yes, sir. Now I would like to do some unusual attitude recoveries for you. I'll do the first one, and then uh, you, then uh, I'll demo one, and then you'll do one, okay? Let's say we find ourselves in something like this, right? First, power back. Unload. Roll wings level. And come to the horizon without stalling. As the nose comes to the horizon, power back up. Make sense? That is classic primary training. All right, good. So I'm going to hand this to you in just a second. And uh, I'm going to put you in that situation. I'd like to see you will have both the power and the controls, okay? Then I'd like to see you recover. Okay, John, recover. Very nice. All right, now tell me, I got the airplane again. You got it. Tell me how you were taught to do a nose high unusual attitude recovery. All the power, lower the nose, then wings level. Okay. For uh, sort of uh, normal uh, category GA airplanes, that works well. I want to show you what aerobatics uh, teaches you and what flying fighters teaches you. So if you, get, if you find yourself up here like this, what you're going to do is power up, just unload and let the nose fall to the horizon. Once the nose goes, you're unloaded, you can't stall. Once it goes through the horizon, now you're in a nose low recovery. And you just pull the nose through the horizon. That's an aerobatic, uh, unusual attitude recovery. You want to try it? Sure do. Okay. Let me get you in the situation. So, it's the same thing, power up and then unload and let the nose fall. Your airplane. All right. All the power, little forward stick. Beautiful. Beautiful, my friend. You can let that nose fall a little bit lower, but nothing wrong with that. Gotcha. You, you let the, when you uh, leveled the wings, you came out at about 90, 85, 90. You can let that fall a little bit more if you have the space to. Let's try it again. Gotcha. Okay. Okay, John, recover. There you go. Nice. Now manage your power. Very nice. So I tell you what, right here, just pull it until it stalls. Just pull it hard until it stalls. Unload. 
There you go. That was a stall at about 130. <laughs> All right, I want to show you one more. We're going to go nose low. Your airplane. My airplane, thank you. So here we are, very nose low. Accelerated stall. And all you do to come out of it is unload. You want to try one of those? Sure. Okay. Nose low and just uh, pull it till it stalls. Your airplane. My airplane. Nice recovery. All right, I got it. Your plane? My airplane will go back. Tower, extra 105, Mike Mike, eight miles west with Victor, full stop. 105, Mike Mike, 45 west, right down, 23. 105, Mike Mike, Wilco. You want to fly it through the downwind? Absolutely. Your airplane, sir. I would like to fly as much as possible. Yes, sir. You're the, you're that kind of a guy. <laughs> One of these uh, stick hogs. I, I, I'm, in, <laughs> I'm in your group. You see, we're, we're coming a little bit high, John. Okay. Um, Very firm. Because uh, we're kind of slipping it to make I sure we can. Uh, uh, Thank you. I can see. I can see a little bit better over the left here. And then as we get about over the numbers, um, you know, I'll start powering back. But when you pull this power back, that prop goes flat. It really slows. Zero, down Mike. Sarah, could you verify? Um John, great flight. What would you think? Give me your first impressions. Way over the top. I would call it just electric, if I got to sum everything down in one word. So similar to a lot of the other tailwheel stuff that we've done, you notice you're needing a lot more rudder input. There's a lot more authority there. Way more <laughs> with this airplane. And just the ability that it has to do what you ask it to as far exceeds everything I've ever been in before, which is amazing. Felt great. I tell you what I was impressed with. Normally when people fly an airplane that's this maneuverable, especially in pitch, when you give the airplane to them, there's a little bit of bucking bronco going on while they get used to that. But you took right to it. You didn't, you didn't over control it right from the start. That's a little bit unusual, I got to tell you. Uh, what I thought was fun was we went into the steep turns. Remember when I said, just roll it as steep as you're comfortable. <laughs> you wrecked it over there about 70 degrees right off the bat, man. Yeah, like I mentioned, it's, it is my favorite maneuver to do. And that was, that was always the one I had to hold myself back with the when I was turns. doing the primary training. Yeah. It's like I wanted to be as sideways as possible. So yeah. now I have the opportunity to go all the way. Do it. Yeah. Out of, we can go through them, but like out of all the maneuvers we did and demonstrated and you flew, which, which was the one that sort of just got your attention as a, oh, wow, that's, that's kind of interesting. So they all kind of terminated at the same place and for the same reason. But I think it was the accelerated stalls that yeah. highlighted them the most. Yeah. Like, no matter what position you were in, again, just unloading the airplane, because the, the, the buffet's very strong. Yeah. Like, it, it smacks you to let you know that, hey, hey, that's too much. Yeah. And you have to do the same thing for recovery. Yeah. Well, you did a good job of keeping it coordinated, because as you saw when we did the skid turn and the slip uh, mm -hmm. turning stall, if you're not coordinated, you know, it'll roll Instant over. Instant spin, yeah. And the thing that is easier in this airplane than it would be like a you know, a, a normal category uh, GA airplane is that if you're in that skid stall, base to final stall, and that happens, it doesn't roll near as fast as this. You know, yeah. we, we could get out of it in this, and that, a different airplane, it's a lot slower roll, but you're still mm -hmm. going over and there's no time to recover. And the interesting thing is, in that spin, you'll get roll rate, but once you actually do recover, then you have to fly out of that, and so that roll rate's gonna be a lot slower. Yeah. So yeah, avoiding it as much as you can yeah. or noticing when you're getting into it so that you can avoid it. Yeah. Now, tell me, what did you think about, so um, first, the um, nose low unusual attitude recovery um, was seemed pretty typical, pretty standard, right? Nothing, I don't think that was eye-opening to you really, mm -hmm. was it, in that procedure? Nope. But nose high, we introduced a little bit of different technique for extreme nose high. Yeah. What, what, how'd you feel about that? So that's one of the things that I did want to comment on. As you said, it was way different than what we're typically taught to lower the nose and then go wings level. Whereas in this one, we just made sure we had power, pushed yeah. a little bit far forward, just to make sure we were out of that area where we could stall and just let the airplane come nose low Yeah. until we got to the horizon. Yeah, power the horizon. up, unload, and just let the nose slice back through the horizon, mm -hmm. let it get down, let your speed come up, and then manage power. Yep. Um, how about the when we did the power exercise, you know, with pointing the nose downhill with the power up? 
did that get your attention at all is how fast this thing accelerates? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And you made the comment that airplanes accelerate better unloaded. So yeah. you have everything working with you, gravity being unloaded, power. Yeah. It's force multipliers, I guess you would call that. Yeah. Yeah, they do. So if you want to get win a drag race or go faster, quicker, unload the airplane when you go full power and you'll lose a little bit of altitude, but they accelerate uh, better at uh, less than one G. Mm -hmm. so beyond that, the landing I thought was also pretty different in that the slip that we had was something that was unusual for me yeah. just to maintain visibility and see how you were approaching the airport. But once we actually got to the runway and corrected that, getting in the ground effect, maintaining that pitch attitude and just waiting for the airplane to come down. That, that's something that I remember doing in wheel landings, but not so much in the configuration that we were here, waiting for a three-point landing. So it yeah. seems like a, a little bit of both. Yeah, yeah. So you, you have to slip, and I got used to that flying a Waco. You know, you mm -hmm. can't see over the nose of a Waco. So you slip until you're just really comfortable that you're lined up and you're on the center of the runway. And then what I like about landing this, on the one hand, it lands at a high speed. Um, on the other hand, once you do set that landing attitude and it lands, mm -hmm. that wing is done. It's, it's not going to bounce up and fly again if you didn't carry too much speed. And then the rudder, the steerable uh, tail wheel back there, just, you know, dance on it like you're mm -hmm. used to in the 140. And it's just, you know, it, it responds really well in the landing. So, John, now that we've set this foundation, you know, you've got a feel for how it accelerates, how it feels, how it turns, the whole concept of unloading before we G up the airplane, accelerated stalls and you get out of them by just unloading. Now we're ready for some basic aerobatics. So now I'm excited to go up and we'll do a couple uh, aileron rolls, we'll do a couple bailero, um, barrel rolls, we'll go some over the top maneuvers, some loops, some split S's, and we will intend, I'll demo one, you'll do one, and we'll intentionally get into some accelerated stalls all the way through the loop. To feel, we'll stall it here, we'll stall it here, we'll stall it on the backside, and just to demonstrate that you, know, you can stall an airplane in any attitude, any airspeed. It'll be and, really cool to see multiple stalls throughout yeah. a maneuver. And the whole response to it, of course, is just unload. Right on. Yeah.